And now, here are your hosts, Yardley and Kinte. Hello, and welcome to an all new episode of Talking Hell on Wheels. I am one of your hosts, Kinte, all the way live from Los Angeles, California. And I'm here with my main man, co host, the one and only militant marker himself, Yardley. How you doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing great, man. It's good to be here. It's good to have Phil back on. It's definitely been a while, man. And I'm kind of digging this new layout, man, of video. So hopefully uh, the fans of the show will enjoy this new format that we've introduced this season. And uh, I definitely look forward to getting into what Phil's been up to and uh, to kind of pick his brain about some stuff that might not be Hell on Wheels related. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to talk about a whole lot. But, uh, you know, uh, today I was on Skype. And uh, it said it was your birthday. And I was like, maybe it was his birthday, but okay. Nah, uh, man. It, it happened actually. My birthday was in February, and I was kind of tripping. I thought that you sent the message. I was like, did he send it to somebody? Was he intending to send it to somebody else? And I was like, damn, man. Don't put me uh, a step closer to the grave just yet, man. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I just thought I thought I had fun with that. <laughs> that uh, Skype said it was totally your birthday. Skype's so, a liar. <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. So uh, I want to take a moment before we introduce our guests to uh, I want to thank, uh, you know, everybody who's contributed with the show, whether it be the cast and crew from the show to the listeners, um, because, you know, obviously without them, we wouldn't be able to do this this program. Um, and uh, a, per- a person I definitely want to give a special shout out to and uh, hopefully we'll have her on before. You know, we say goodbye is uh, Melanie Smith. Uh, Melanie Smith has been just amazing for us. And, um, you know, she was our first booker on the show. And she did such a wonderful job, especially in the beginning of booking our guests for us. And she really was a quite a supportive person. And um, I don't know, some of those who may know Melanie, you know, she's been going through a lot of health challenges over the last couple of years. And this woman is so strong, you know, she's got mm-hmm. very serious, serious um, health issues, but she keeps, she hangs in there. And um, I definitely wanted to make sure we gave her a special shout out today. And uh, we'll try to get her on before the end uh, of this program so that uh, we can definitely give her some love. So uh, I just want to give her a special shout out. Yeah, I have to second that, man. Um, she, she's gone through a lot, man, but she's definitely hanging in there, man. And I don't think that any of that's going to stop. So big ups to her and big ups to Phil, man. Uh, Phil's probably the best wingman you could have on your team these days. Yes. And that's her husband, Phil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Dr. Phil, as we, we call him on the show. Yeah. Just in case people get confused. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so so definitely uh, we send our love out to Melanie and you uh, hang in there. Now, um, now let's get to the other Phil, uh, Mickey McGinnis himself. How you doing, Phil Burt? Yeah, everything's all right. Everything's great. Thanks again for having me on, guys. It's been a while, and uh, I'm really uh, I'm honored and uh, thankful to be here. I am also very enamored with this new setup. I have this is the whole technological fray that I'm entering now with social media and with this whole camera thingy and uh and i'd like to say hello and uh if there's a an opening in phil's for melanie's camp that she knows where to find someone else awesome yeah that's right uh and, uh, and you're one of her favorites so she definitely oh. it. yeah so uh but you know what's so funny is i i re- recently watched the pilot of hell on wheels a couple of weeks ago right and i was and i saw you and Ben, and I'm like, man, you guys look so young. You guys look like babies on the on the in the pilot. I'm not saying you look like a 90 year old man now, but I don't know. Was it, have you seen it recently? You look very, very, very boyish, young. I have not seen most of the show, to be quite honest, um, for many different reasons. But uh, I do remember a few of those scenes, and you know. We've been on it for six and a half, seven years. One of the only, uh, you know, to make it to this final season, at least, um, for now, you know, without giving away any spoilers. And, 
so yeah, it's it, it was uh, it was great, man. It's been a great ride, and uh, maybe I should go back and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why not, man? Go, go ahead and do that. I know that back then I didn't I didn't have a beard either, so maybe I'm a little bit more like that guy than I was, you know, a few months ago. Well, you know what? That's not surprising. Uh, when we first get in the game, and whenever we start doing something new. You know, you're fresh, you're hungry, and uh, everything is exciting. And uh, I definitely have to agree. I actually, I didn't go back and watch the earlier episodes, but I did see some screenshots of you guys. I think it's a screenshot when you guys were on the train. Um, <laughs> uh, I think you guys were heading um, heading to, oh, gosh, uh, whatever the destination, when you guys were first, you know, hitting the railroad uh, with the youthful uh, enthusiasm. And, man, it, it's kind of funny. You can kind of see it in everyone's faces that this was a new experience. So, uh, like all things, you get a little bit grizzled over time, man. But hey, man, you're still here, man. And we know that you're going to do some great things in the future. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if it's grizzled. You just, I think it's more experience than anything, yeah. right? Like you just, especially when you're on a show and you're with a family and you know all these guys and, you know, you work with them back and forth and, um, you know, it becomes this great, wonderful, inclusive family. And, um, you know, that was the biggest part about finishing with the filming last year was that uh you know for a lot of us well a lot we are really tight especially the sort of the um the original gangsters we're all pretty close and the ones that live here in um new york especially we see each other quite often um but uh that thing we did in sacramento it was great to see the guys again and and uh you know it's a lot of uh it was, it was tough leaving but um you know new chapters ready to begin that makes any sense yeah yeah it makes a lot of sense actually and it's been has it been a year since you guys stopped shooting already uh we stopped in october i believe the first week of october if i remember correctly oh, okay do you, um, so yeah hey do you and ben still keep in contact no, man, that guy's like the wind. You can't really catch that guy. I don't know where he is or what he's doing. I mean, he's in Australia or he's not. I mean, I think we emailed there about a year yeah. ago. But um, I wish him the best. I hope he's doing all right. And if he's around, uh, hopefully I get to see him uh, sooner than later. I don't blame him. It's not, I mean, you did kill him. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe, that, maybe that might be it. Maybe he hasn't gotten it's over true. that. Plan. But uh, <laughs> it's possible. Hey, you know what, Phil? Well, we have to ask you. Yeah. I want to go ahead and get this out of the way. We've got to get in our uh, obligatory sports talk. Now, we know that your loyalties lie uh, with hockey, but uh, what what else have you yeah. been checking out, man? Are you um, Did you check out anything as far as the NBA uh, was concerned? Well, definitely being from Toronto, I jumped on that Raptors oh. bandwagon pretty hard. And, uh, you know, I was I didn't think that they'd win anything against Cleveland. Um, you know, I think we should have definitely won that second round, but, you know, to bring it to the wire, then, you know, coming back and beating Cleveland the way we did, I was like, whoa, this is actually, this, it got, it gave us a little bit of hope. Now I'm glad that the Cavs won, don't get me wrong. Um, I, I'm so glad for the city of Cleveland and, you know, for their drought to finally be over. But, um, yeah. And then especially with the Euros going on, uh, obviously being from Ireland, a big, huge Irish supporter and I was following with those guys and, um. You know, to make it to the second round of something else, we were 45 minutes away to make it to the quarterfinals. But it's always a great time, and, and uh, you know, it's only every four years, so it's pretty special for us. And to be in the tournament, that was great. And then, of course, uh, diehard Blue Jays fan. And, um, you know, the boys are like a roller coaster. I got to tell you, most of the days I want to strangle <laughs> that bullpen. Yeah. And, um, and they gave up another one last night, which drives me insane. But you know, but, you uh, know I think your Blue Jays gave the MLB the best moment of the year. The the sock heard around the world. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, is an asshole. Let's just fire that right out there. He sucker punched, sucker punched shit out of him because he went in a hard slide. I hate these new fucking rules, and I hate this, oh, you can't touch, you can't touch, I can't go into the catcher. I know you have to protect your players, but, you know, just if I'm going for a hard slide, it, it was a play. Now they're taking that away. Now you can't take a hard. Now you're taking a hard slide away from second base when I'm coming in, and it, it, it's part of the play. That's what made good second base with good shortstops, guys like Derek Jeter, you know, Ozzie Smith, guys that could still make the play, avoid the tag, and complete the double. Like I just, I just think that I don't want it to become, you know, right. wiffle ball. <laughs> to be right. Ball. If there's any contact, I mean, the guy's out for like the rest of the year. <laughs> 
If you give him a foot, we were the first team that got caught. Batista, again, he just touched the guy in Tampa. It was the second game of the year. We got a call back. It was just a whole game changer. I just uh, so disagree. The thing with that was crazy that about that was they were mad at Batista because he celebrated when he hit the winning home run. I'm like, what was he supposed to do? <laughs> he wanted to go. Oh, right. Sorry, guys. You know, nobody threw Joe Carter when he won with a home run. Right. I mean, let's get serious. You know, that's called that's that's passion, that's emotion, that's what you want from sports. That's why people follow sports, that's why people get involved in their teams, that's why you know people you know cry after the winning shot or you know cry after making that save or the Olympics coming up. How many people are gonna be seen crying every day? That's passion, that's emotion, that's what it's supposed to be about, and that's what's endearing to fans and to onlookers. It's like if you take that away from the game and fucking take the game away from us all all together, and I'll go read, you know, some more Hemingway, or I'll read, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll find a mission somewhere else. It drives me fucking insane the way they just sort of lock down, and it's got to be, you know, just a little this, a little this, like tiptoe, eggshells. Like, come on, these people are grown men. They know what they're getting into, or grown women for that matter. Right. They understand. You know, there's people, you know, you see the WNBA once in a while, and, you know, they're throwing shoulders inside. They're, they're, they're elbow in the paint. Like, let's get serious. They're a lot. Like, it's part of the right. game. It's crazy to me. You know, if if you want him not to celebrate when he hits the winning home run, don't don't give up the winning home run. <laughs> you know, there you go. That's well said. Well said. Now, now, now you've been staying in the states, right? Um, uh, you, is that where you reside now in uh, New York? Yeah, I mean, I've always, I've, always, I've been here for the last uh, fifty. Oh, years. so oh, okay. So you you're a New Yorker yep. then, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, I got that New York butt a few years back. I was in L.A. for a quick cup of coffee that lasted about 14 months, but I decided to uh, come to my senses and move back to the, to the city of the living. What do you miss from home though, being in New York? Pardon Is there anything that you miss from home uh, since you've been in New York the last 15 oh. years? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you miss the boys back home and, uh, you know, you miss your family and your parents and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, there's uh, I miss being able to um, watch, you know, the Leafs on a CBC feed. That that sucks. Um, it's tough watching I, now that the technology. So I listen to a lot of still Toronto sports radio and, you know, different things from, you know, across the world. Even I listen to Irish radio quite a lot as well. And um yeah, I mean, I'm lucky enough that I was working in Canada for the last six years and I could go back to Toronto and from Calgary, even though it's quite a haul. But um, I try and get there a few times a year. And I know my parents, they come down and support me here. And uh, it's um, it's not as far as we think. My sister's about to move to New Zealand, and that's going to be a whole different story for her. Is there anything as far as uh, cuisine uh, that you miss from Toronto that you don't get in New York? Oh, hot dogs. Yeah, really? man. There's the, the street meat in Toronto is the best. You know, it is the hot dogs in Toronto are the best hot dogs in the world. It's not just here where you know everybody talks about a New York hot dog, which are boiled and they'll give you like mustard and some dirty fucking onions. It's like no, they give you massive sausage for two bucks, and then you've got like three different types of ketchup, four different types of mustard. You got bacon bits, cream corn, relish, pickles, hot peppers, sweet peppers, whatever you need. And it's all included in the two dollars, and it's a nice big fat sausage that can make, you know, a quick dinner just that much more. Wow! <laughs> wow. How I much are hot dogs in New York, Phil? Like six dollars? I think that I think they're only depending on where you are. They're usually a couple bucks or three bucks. The, the street meat that I do eat here is uh, the halal. Yeah. Love a good halal. A little, yeah, a little chicken and yeah. rice. A little, little, little. Uh, you know, chicken and pita, a little gyro oh, action. Yeah. That stuff, that stuff's golden. That's great. But the hot dogs are. This is the <laughs> to go to uh, what's it, Papaya King on eighty six and third. What's that say again? Oh, Papaya oh, yeah, King. Papaya King. What is it? Is that what it is? Yeah, not so bad. Like the, the the real good hot dogs here in New York are like Criff dogs. Like when you go to some sort of more designer hot dog places, like those are good hot dogs. Criff dogs is probably my favorite. That's down in. Uh, just around St. Mark's. Uh, papaya dog's not bad. Papaya King, they're all right. Uh, but uh, there's still, there's nothing better than than Toronto Toronto hot dogs, man. They are fantastic. 
fantastic. And then you get, you, it's not even just a hot dog. It's like a sausage, a sweet Italian sausage, a Polish sausage. Like there's all different kinds and it's right out of a cart. Yeah. From usually some lovely people working behind it. Hey, you know what? Before the show, we were kind of um, talking about social media and your entrance uh, into it. So now you're on Twitter and on Instagram. And there was something that I saw on your Instagram page. Uh, was that a picture of Carl Meany uh, with that <laughs> with that T-shirt on? What's up with that? Yeah, that's from a movie. That's from a great Irish movie that he is phenomenal in. It's called okay. The Van, which is a, a continuation of the uh, the Barrytown trilogy. So the first was The Commitments, uh, that great glorious movie. And then the second one is called The Snapper, which is just about Colum and his family. Um, and then the third one is The Van. And it's about him during the, uh, the 1990 World Cup. And Italy ended up beating uh, Ireland in the quarterfinals and uh, won nothing by, and uh, uh, Salvatore Scalacci scored the match. So after, <laughs> After after he had the uh, he had the after the match was done and everybody was so dejected and got you know uproariously drunk, he had these T-shirts made saying "Fuck Scalacci," which was the guy. So that was uh, that's that's why we had it done. That's why I put it up there rather, and I sent it to him as well, and he thought he got he was gassed about it. He thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Man, you know, uh, you guys have such great scenes together. Um, I love to, you know what I love about your character now, kind of uh, going into uh, Hell on Wheels is that your character, it seemed like after you guys killed that butcher, then you just, it's like that just totally transformed you into this other person now. And now your character, you know, everybody else is getting, you know, tricked by Durant and all of this stuff. And you are so much wiser now, your character. And uh, I loved, I don't know if you saw that, uh, if you, it's probably been a while since you've done it. But the scene with uh, you and Durant and and um, you guys are just basically horse trading over how you were going to how your character was going to have involvement with him. And you're like, no, nah, you're not letting him get away with stuff. And I love the scenes between you and and Kalmini. What, what's that like working with the guy? It's a dream. I mean, I grew up watching that guy. I mean, he was, uh, you know, I, I know I've said this before, but he was, <coughs> excuse me, my parents you know, uh, being from Ireland and, and all that, whenever you see an Irish guy on TV or in a movie or a movie, it's like, you know, Jesus, he's Irish, he's Irish. It's like Canadians are the same sort of way, I think. It was like, he's Canadian, he's Canadian. And uh, it's like, oh, and they're like, oh, I didn't know. It's like, yeah, he's Canadian. Uh, it was Martin Short, really? Like, yeah, dude. <laughs> John Candy, really? Yeah, dude. But uh, it's being able to work with him and then moreover being able to uh, become very close friends with him and to look up to him and to be, um, you know, regarded as a very close friend of his is something that's very, uh, very special to me and something that I, I, uh, I treasure and think that's, uh, it's, uh, it's, as far as that's concerned, it's a dream come true. And then working with him is, is <laughs> we have such a bat, we have a blast. Like all we do is, <laughs> giggle and like you make jokes and you know screw around with people on set it's hilarious it's just it's awesome it's terrific and his, his trailer is always like really close to mine so i'm usually in his trailer like i'll go dress and i'll just go hang out in his trailer or whatever we just have a lot of fun on set and i think it uh it just makes for the work atmosphere that much better you know and you know what when we talked to you last we were talking about the future development of the character of mickey and we knew that there were things about the character that we were hoping would be revealed about his past but at this point in the series is the direction uh that they're taking mickey's character something that you envisioned uh a couple of years ago since the last time we talked to you um no I don't think so. I think um, probably because I always thought I was going to die. You know, there was, I've said this before, I think that, you know, if you were to take odds in Vegas after the pilot about who would go and who would stay, I think you'd be, you know, four to one that Mickey was going to be toast. And, uh, you know, the fact that we've made it this far um, is, uh, is, Fantastic. And, I, you know, I owe that to the writers and to, you know, the those people that saw something within the character and, you know, hopefully what I was bringing yeah. to it. Um, as far as uh, what their their ideas were, 
we did we did sort of every now and then have a chat and usually it was over a couple of beers or over dinner or when we finished one season like what do you think or you know do you have an idea and i'd give some ideas i think i remember once i, I think it was after the first season they're like I mean, it was the second season they're like so uh burke what do you uh what do you what do you what are you, what are you thinking about mickey and i was like what if he became like this bounty hunter what if he was like steve mcqueen you know like in wanted dead or alive like and he just sort of went sort of rogue but then he was you know just like he sort of his whole face is hell on wheels he went to kill people for money and all this kind of stuff and then he's like bring in all the bad guys and everything i mean i suppose there, <laughs> i think that was just me trying to be cooler than answer but, uh, <laughs> well that's what you do you you set the bar really high and <laughs> right? and then uh i mean i think there's there's, there's some that that's sort of there but uh my steve mcqueen dream is still yet to be realized so uh um, <laughs> Hey, well, you did, hey, you became a pimp though on the show, so yeah. props to, you. props to. You. I did. I think that I think that was more. I think that was more because they saw me in real life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. You know something that I never would have thought watching the show in the early seasons is I never would have thought that Mickey and Eva's kind of their fate would be intertwined in any type of way later on, and uh, I do definitely find that interesting that. You two are kind of a you know an, an odd couple. I know the season's not over, so um, you know things can go up or down for both of those characters. But I never would have thought that you know your two destinies would kind of be uh, intertwined together on the show. Yeah, I think that I think me and uh, me and Rob Dog had a had a conversation one night about sort of our things, and I think we both sort of agreed because she went through a lot of dudes. Like, <laughs> yeah, she, she went through Rashid, she went through Anson, she went through Durant, she went through friggin' uh, Duncan, Oloren Shaw, that was her first husband, right? Right, even the girl, right? Didn't she get in with Well, the- hey, listen, she, you know, she was hired as a whore and she didn't stray too far away from that, let me tell you. But uh, so I don't. Uh, I, I I I think we kind of talked about it, and then and then it then it really sort of started. Things started mer- working forward, and we were listening to the, or rather, reading what the, the narrative that our uh, blessed writers were giving us, and um, we kind of saw the writing on the wall, and then it was up to us to sort of figure out where we wanted to necessarily take it, like utilize what the the. the sort of what the, the script was being given for us, and then kind of go, well, what if this happened? And like not telling anybody, but like hopefully showing some signs of bits and pieces about what we're actually feeling about each other and all that kind of jazz. And uh, I don't know whether it comes across or not. I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to check into the show. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because for fans who've been with the show since the beginning, uh, we tend to not want a lot of change in terms of storylines uh, that we want to follow with certain characters. And there are a lot of people who are kind of hot that it, at least the first half, um, we weren't getting a lot of Mickey uh, and the character uh, of Eva. But watching that next on trailer after the last episode, man, it looks like uh, the Mickey game is about to get stepped up a little bit there. I'm gonna halt before I answer. <laughs> Can't give anything away. Uh, definitely, our relationship does. You can see what sort of the the foundations that are being laid and what's gonna sort of. Yeah. Well, you. I, I gotta I gotta call Mickey out though. I gotta call go Mickey on. out. What did he think Johnny Shay was gonna do? <laughs> Did he really think Johnny Shea was going to be tame and do exactly what he was told to do? No, <laughs> not at all. No, I think there, I think there, no, definitely not. I mean, I think that, I think there is a moment if I'm correct again, I should really tuck into these bad boys. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the thing. That's one of the reasons that I have a problem watching anything that I'm really in is because I don't necessarily know what moments they're going to show and the way that it's edited. And, you know, sometimes, and that's just the nature of the beast. And that's just the way of the game. And, you know, it's no ill will or I don't feel bad about it. It just gets me a little bit. Cause you, you know, you'll, 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 
you'll have these moments. They'll fill, you know, they'll film these moments. They'll shoot these moments. You're there. You know, you have these ideas with these with your scene partners and your fellow actors, and you know, you have these ideas for these characters and what you want to come across. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, because of time, they're cutting your scene down for two minutes, or they're cutting, they're gutting half of that dialogue or the vocals between the scene. Um, you know, uh, I know that there was a just specifically talking about when uh, when Andrew came in, when Johnny came in there, he when he ate the eye, and then I remember like they filmed me, whether it's in it or not, but I definitely was like, oh shit, like oh no, like this 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 could be a bad idea. You know, I think initially it was going to be great, and like you know, all best laid plans, it's going to go wonderful. Everybody's great. You know, brother, woo! Awesome, great to see you again. Remember that time? Do do do. And then when he's eating somebody's eye, you're like, oh, I bet maybe I bit off a bit more than I can chew. Yeah. You know, I think I think you could relate that to the um, to the Brexit right now. I think that a lot of the British people realizing now that they bit off a hell of a lot more than they could chew, and they don't really understand what the hell they're doing. <laughs> I'll just that's just, that'll be my political take for the yeah yeah. <laughs> It, it, but anyhow, but no, but uh, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I think at one point I thought, and I think at one point, and me and Andrew did have this conversation where I said, I think you could fucking take me out, and he was like, and we had we were having pints, and he was like, no, and then we were talking about how we would want to take each other out. Was, that was pretty fun. <laughs> we like to have those conversations. Wow, wow. You know, Johnny Shane character is definitely a, a very interesting character, and uh, I like him. He's like a pit bull that you just can't keep on the leash you know that he he's gonna go go all we, we call it going all johnny shea uh, on every so uh awesome. i love the scene though where he gets punched by uh by stagecoach mary that was priceless i love that was great, oh, great that was that was, a, that was a lot of fun that was our first scene of sort of the year last year i think i think it was our first scene of the year last mm. year and we uh that was that was a lot of fun that was a good day <laughs> he did a pretty good fall if i remember correctly <laughs> How many times did they have to shoot that? And what's it like uh, kind of being in a scene with Amber Chardé? Uh, uh, um, so, you know, I was very much in the background for most of her work. And then um, it's acting. Man. It's not uh -oh. um, uh -oh. But, uh, yeah, we were, she was working there. It was great. I think it was the first thing that she did as well. So, um you know, it was nice to see, uh, you know, bring a new person within the fold and uh, and welcome them and uh, allow them to do their uh, bits and pieces, you know? Uh, no doubt. Oh, no doubt. I mean, that was pretty cool. I, I think that that's actually one of the most uh, talked about scenes. I actually think that that's what they put on AMC.com, that that was one of the most um, talked about scenes. But definitely you and your relationship with uh, Johnny Shea on the show is definitely uh, pretty awesome. And actually, they kind of follow up on what you were saying about you not necessarily watching yourself uh, much on television shows because you don't know what they're going to cut. Uh, I was actually going to ask you a question, like, what's it like to be through with the show and have an opportunity to kind of sit in the bleachers uh, as a fan and watch things play out? Because I know that you're on social media now. Do you just kind of sit back and um, sometimes maybe have a drink and kind of enjoy some of the reactions that the fans have to your work? Um. <laughs> I'm just picturing myself with like a Game of Thrones oh. goblet sitting on my own little throne here in my small kitchen going, let me see what the fans are thinking about this <laughs> evening. Yeah. Oh, my Medieval Times cup too. It's my Medieval Times cup. So I'm drinking with that. So I'm like, oh, yes, let me see what the fans are talking about <laughs> me. Oh, lovely. You know, um, no, I wouldn't say that I go through that or, or sort of pay too much attention to that. But I do, uh, I do try and answer all uh, it's never usually very prompt but as far as like you know when people send me anything or or send me letters want me to sign anything and all that kind of stuff and they have you know love, love uh -oh, we're having a, you might want to get them to fill you might want to refresh your to say and you know it's just uh yes yeah. hey phil you just know, come very right back humbled in and very um very special. We have a caller. Yeah, just a little technical. Oh, there you go. You're back. 
All right. Yeah. Can you hear us? Hello. Hello. Can you hear? Hello. It? You can't hear us. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear? Caller, while we're waiting on Field to come back. Uh, caller. Eric, I can call, see me. Erico four two three. We can see you. Can you? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? So you're gonna refresh. I'm white. <laughs> hey, I hey. can wait. No, no, uh, caller. Uh, what's your name and where you're calling from? Well, this is Joe, and y'all know I'm calling from East Tennessee. East Tennessee. Oh. All right. All right. Um, here goes Phil. It's coming back in. Phil, can you hear us? Is that right? Hello, can you hear us? Hey. Hello. Oh. Can you hear us? Yep. All right. Cool. Uh, we have a we have a caller that just called in. Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, caller. Yep, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up, Joe? Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? Cool. I hey, tell you what, what's going on is I'm a damn genius. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because as soon as I call, Phil disappears. <laughs> <laughs> You know me, I'm gonna have some fun with that. You know what? By the way, today is your birthday, right? Yes, sir, it most certainly is. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. I uh actually had to run away from home and go to my parents' cabin and bounce off of their internet from the same house because I went batshit crazy over getting to talk to Phil Burke on my birthday as my Facebook friends know. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Let's see. Phil, are you with us? Are we back? I'm back. Okay, here you go. All right, now we got Phil. It's funny. It's like uh, he's having some internet difficulties. Yeah, it, it almost seems as if uh, when you're coming in, Phil, uh, for some reason the the feed is um, is freezing. But uh, if you're on your desktop, you might want to uh, refresh. Can you hear us? <laughs> so, well, Joe. Uh, well, while we're trying to get this to happen for you today, a lot of things. Uh, happened today. Uh, my daughter, who's in the U.S. Navy and has been out to sea, okay. managed to be able to figure out a way to give me a call. Uh. And a couple of weeks ago, who my son has been living away, going to college, he moved back home for a year because he wants to save money. He's been accepted to University of Law of California in Pasadena, I guess. Oh, okay. So <laughs> oh, okay. somewhere he's one of these big architect students and some kind of voice actor. So he got to move back home and save money for a year. So I've had a pretty good day. Oh, that's great. Now, have you, uh, did you get that year uh, in writing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he has all that somewhere. He's um, one of these very mysterious young men. Uh, with him being the only son and me being the overcoddling mother that I am, he kind of likes to do everything on his own and surprise me last minute on everything. So, yeah, he's uh, he's got pretty much everything set. He's just moved back in with me to save money for a year because... I guess the cost of living out in Pasadena is a hell of a lot more than it is in East Tennessee. So he gave up his apartment on campus to come home. Oh, awesome. Hey, hey, Joe, something that I know, I don't know how much we elaborated on this when we talked to you um, the last time. Uh, have you had an opportunity to rewatch the last episode? I have not. Um, at home, I have the Xfinity, and I guess they're redoing all of the live. Huh.
Something has happened with this feed, Kente. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you just fine. Uh, I'm sorry. Say that again. Say say it again, Joe. That was my fault. I said I've got a pretty good memory. If you want to refresh me, what you want to talk about? Well, no, I was wondering. I mean, if you had an opportunity to go back and watch it, just your overall thoughts on the episode. Right. It seems like we got you. Right. We good? back. Can you hear us, Phil? Yeah. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Cool. Cool. All right. All right. Well, since we've got you in, Phil, go ahead. And... <laughs> since we've got you in, I guess we better hand the floor over to Joe. So you mean I get to talk to Phil now? Yeah, yeah. get after it. <laughs> oh, my God. That is like uh, my mother has James Brolin and my sister has, uh, I think, George Clooney or Brad Pitt. I've got Phil Burke. Eddie Spears and Anson Mount. So I am absolutely psyched right now. Uh, Phil, how's it going? <laughs> oh, damn uh, thing. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, come on. Like, you know what? I think that, uh, yeah, we might have to hit Phil up with the uh, the call in. Uh, oh, man. Like Blab is like um, Lucy pulling the football away from Charlie Brown when he's about to kick it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you know, it's it's his. It's probably his uh, internet connection. Yeah. You know, me and you ain't dropping, so it can't be. Yeah. The so, but um, okay, we're gonna get him back in, uh, and uh, if not, you know, if if worse comes to worse, we'll have him call in. But um. um if worse comes to worse, you guys give him my cell phone number, and he can give me a call, and I can talk to him on my birthday. <laughs> he oh, can man. call from an unknown number. <laughs> hey, well, well, actually, one of the reasons why I was asking you if you if you rewatched the episode, a, a lot of the topic of conversation has, of course, been uh, centered around uh, the relationship between um, Cullen and apparently his ex-wife, and now his newfound. Um, um, there we go. Interest, so oh, to sorry, speak. Guys. I'm just trying to figure this out. Now he's good. Now he's uh, good. All right now, Joe. Your question. Yeah, go ahead. My question for Phil. Um, we know Mickey, but without giving anything away, <laughs> could you possibly tell us? Are we going to see more of Mickey's story on? why he is the way he is, which I'm not complaining. We all need a villain. <laughs> I'm just curious wow. as to if we're going to get to look inside of Mickey a little bit more than we've been able to see so far. We've all got our speculations. But just out of curiosity, are we going to learn anything more about his past? Um, I'm going to choose my words carefully. Sorry. It's nice to meet you, Joe, by the way. And sorry about the, uh, sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, the elves in my apple are, uh, clearly sleeping at the moment. Um, yeah. what I was, what I, what I was going to say, as far as that's concerned, I think in the upcoming episodes, you'll see, uh, there's a little bit more as far as, uh, what, what's making Mickey tick. Um, okay. I can't necessarily uh, comment on whether you will be able to know sort of his past necessarily yet or what's going on um, because I'm sure that there's some sniper out there who's willing to take me out if I do break a, break a confidentiality agreement. <laughs> um, you can do that because but, that would ruin me as no. well. Oh, well, they, all right. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's um, – yeah, I think you'll see you'll see some more shades, and there'll be some more peeling of that onion, if you will. Although I will take note and exception to uh, calling me a villain. Um, I think that uh, Mickey is is a survivor. He's not a villain. I think he, I think he, I think the fact that he's made it this far means that he's doing something right. I mean, I think there's much worse people in Hell on Wheels than Mickey. Yeah. Yes, of course. And but for one, we have grown. And, and I said this when I was talking to Robin and I was about to break down. 
there has been a family that has developed through Hell on Wheels. Um, I think I probably have 50 friends now from around the world on my Facebook and Twitter simply because of Hell on Wheels. And that brings me to another question, and that is, what have you learned that you may carry in your day-to-day life from this role? And has Mickey affected you in any way or maybe changed any bad habits or good habits? <laughs> Depending on what habits you're speaking of, that's uh, very interesting. Um, I think uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm noticed. I like it. I'm in. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Uh, no, I was thinking. I think that um, one of the things uh, you know, I said this a few years before that uh, I never went to a third level education. I never went to university or college or anything. I just sort of did acting school. And what this show, um, what I'm so very blessed to have been a part of, that's this was my university. You know, I was I was working on every different department throughout while we filmed. I you know I did stuff with the the camera department, with the lighting department, with set deck, with props. I did locations. Um, you know, I shadowed uh, Neil LeBute a bunch of times. I was there. You know, I even got to you know shoot a couple of scenes. It was only B-roll, but still, like you know. So it was as far as what I learned. I mean, I learned so much just about the machine and and, and what it does and what it is to be on set. You know, quite frequently and to to, to realize uh, you know just all the hands that go in and all the all the work and. And the hard work and the dedication um, from top to bottom. I mean, uh, that that is something that I will always carry around with me, if you will. And you know, and then the friendships, of course, and um, being able to, you know, just move forward and continue growing as far as uh, as an actor is concerned. And um, and you know, just know the more you know, the better off you're going to be. And you know, hopefully, in a in a in a few years down the road, when I'm in sort of a more of a power position, if you will, um, I'll be more apt to make a better decision because of the knowledge that I've gained mm. previously. You know? That's fantastic. Does that make sense? Hello? Wow, yeah, Joe. Good. And as far as the, as far as the habits, uh, I've I, I'm I'm nothing but a. Uh, a poetry reader and I drink green tea and uh, you know, I'm mostly just at the, at the poet shop and um, I would never ever find myself. In well, just know that you have built such an enormous whatsoever. fan base and we love you so much. And my final question and Ken Tay and Yardley pretty much Thank know everything there is about me, but I need some advice for my son, who is a top-notch architect student who works also as a set designer for the area county community theaters and has just recently started doing some voice acting for video games with a friend out in Pasadena, California. What advice would you give him as far as the technicalities of shows and what is it that he needs to develop within himself to become whatever it is he wants to become in life? Uh, as far as for me, um, I just keep going. Just, you know, I think that's, that's all you can do is keep believing in the dream and follow it. And, um, uh, it's not going to be easy no matter what you do, whether you're a carpenter or an actor or an architect or, you know, a set deck or a set design or whatever it is. I mean, you just got to keep moving forward and, and, um, and working hard and believing in it. And, uh, you know, good things will happen. You know, you're going to fight the resistance. As far as the, the yeah, and you know what? I, I would Yardley's definitely have to say He's one of the things you've got to do is, is you've got to you've got to network and don't burn bridges because I've got a lot of opportunities, uh, basically based off of people who I might have worked with in the past or I have met um, 
kept my, I don't want to say kept my standing good. Uh, we kind of developed a relationship. And if you make an impression on people, they will keep you in mind. And sometimes, um, well, a lot of times in life, sometimes you get things not necessarily because you're good at it. It's because you know people and you built a relationship and you'll get an opportunity because there have been plenty of times where I faked it till I made it. <laughs> I, I, would, I would second that a billion percent. You know, nobody wants to work with an asshole. So if anything you can do, you know, you catch more flies with honey and don't get taken yeah. advantage of. But also, you know, you got to pay your dues and make sure you pay them with a smile. Exactly. Otherwise, people will remember and, the other um, way, too. That's pretty much what I've told him is maintain those uh, relationships. Uh, be better to others than they are to you. It's a Tennessee thing, I think. Yeah. But anyway, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank. Yardley and Tim Tay for giving me the opportunity to speak with one of my all-time favorite actors. I want to wish all of you guys a good night. And Phil, once again, thank you so much. This has been the highlight of my day. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Keep watching. Happy There's birthday. A, a lot of stuff to come, and I'm sure we'll speak thank soon. Thank you, guys. It's been a great birthday. Thanks to you Happy guys birthday. and Phil. And I will definitely keep watching. I have rearranged my work schedule right. to make sure that happens. Uh, awesome. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm going to sign off now. Everybody have a good night. Thanks, and bye-bye. Hey, Phil, have you ever heard of uh, the actor uh, Stephen Ogg? Have you ever heard of the actor Stephen Ogg? Say again? Um, have you ever, are, you, are, are you familiar with the, um, the Grand Theft Auto video games? No. Did you you know the last one, the guy who plays yes. Trevor? The the guy uh oh uh, okay. No. I haven't I haven't played it for I haven't played it for a few years actually. I've got <laughs> dust on my PS3 and my Xbox and I look yeah. at it and I know that if I dust it off and I put that controller in my hand that it's gonna be a oh, time tunnel that well, I definitely want to cool sign on that. But there's an actor, he plays a character Trevor that's on Grand Theft Auto. And it's kind of funny because uh this guy's personality uh, in yours, I, I kind of envisioned because uh, he's actually from Calgary, and um, I always like envision. Ju it's just this guy's attitude, oh. his presence, it reminds me so much of you. And I kind of wanted a. Um, it would be awesome to see you guys like team up on like some type of a detective show. J just Google Stephen Ogg. You you'll know who he is. But it's just what oh, yeah. What made me think of it is I was. <laughs> I was looking at something and um, I was like, you know what? Phil Burke and Stephen Ogg would be an awesome team uh, on a television show. But uh, but I'll get off of that since you don't uh, you're not familiar with the last game. But uh, but actually. Yeah, but, uh, you know, no, it's, it's, I was just I was just, I was just going to say the um, I'm not sure you guys have heard the spinoff that AMC is sort of yeah, talking about right so. now. It's called Mickey P.I. Yeah, yeah. where um, I'm a. I'm a private investigator. It's sort of a, more of a gruesome murder she wrote. But, um, you know, we go and have sort of weekly adventures and solve mysteries and kill people. And, you know, I'm starting that sort of um, – I'm starting that push. And uh, I've already started I've already started my petition and my campaign. There's only <laughs> one signature, and that's mine. But, um, you know – Now, we'll now Phil, you upset. know, with so things having wound, wound down for Hell on Wheels as a show in whole, uh, what, what are three moments – uh, that you've had playing the character Mickey to stick out the most to you? Um, all I, I somebody asked me that not too long ago. Um, all that, and uh, you know they let me do all that stuff, Elf, which is great. And uh, Brent Wolsey, our stunt coordinator, who's kick ass. He's uh, uh, he lets me. Um, yeah, we just go through it. We train, we work, and that's always fun. Those are always great days. Shootout days, fight days, those are always great days. Anytime I'm on a horse, that is a great day. Um, I love doing that stuff. Uh, I love horses. I love just riding. They used to let me train a lot more than they should have because the Wranglers were kick ass. And um, what else? The sex scene. That was obviously one that you can't really forget. That's really difficult and weird to do that was my first one and it's very odd you know you're just like do i smell okay is my face all right how's it going yeah, i don't know and um yeah anytime oh anytime we any 
the time when we had most of the cast on set, like for some of those bigger days or bigger pieces, those were those are great days. That's what I remember, like because those days where everybody gets to pal around and hang out for the whole day, and you know, you're just breaking balls and you know, playing around yeah. and you know, causing trouble mostly in my uh, Mary, world. Mary Gale in our chat room says, "Phil, you have the best wardrobe <laughs> on the show. Uh, have so enjoyed how you created Mickey." Congratulations on a stunning role and keep that awesome green velvet coat, which is uh, your <laughs> signature piece. Hilarious. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And you'll be happy to know that I stole one of the three jackets that we had. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love it. It's actually 15 feet away. All right. So um, uh, let's talk about the future uh, for uh, Phil Burke. Um, are there any, um, you know, I know we kind of talked about it in the pre-chat, but um, is there anything that uh, on the horizon that we should be on the lookout for? I know you did something with Neil LeBute and um, and also uh, any any uh, charities or anything that we should uh, know about? Um, I did this movie there a few weeks ago, or a few weeks ago, a couple months ago now, I guess it is, um, called Call Sheet. And it's kind of a horror thriller sort of indie film. And uh, yeah, we're going to see how that kind of comes out. Um, it's uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to do. We were, it was all sort of night shoot. So we were kind of vampires in the Poconos for a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, well, I'll be interested to see how that turns out. And then um, I'm just doing a few readings. He's trying to get another job now. Um, been awfully close to a lot of, good thing so we just got to keep pushing forward and um yeah as far as my philanthropy is concerned um i've been helping anson whatever he needs it and you know uh and that is i know i sent some stuff to some of the troops there not too long ago with for some people um which was re really nice i was so you know honored to be asked um so uh yeah i think um that part of my career is still in its infancy, but something that I'm looking to um, grow in the future. I know I, I, I organized a, a big thing in Calgary there. It was the last year, the year before, when we did um, uh, a lot of stuff for Ducks Unlimited, which is uh, preservation, and um, then we did for Green Calgary, which is all about uh, green energy and, and uh, self-sustaining power and self-sustainability. So we did that. We had a big, huge sort of auction raffle type dealy at uh one of the cool bars in calgary and uh that was a pretty fun day so uh yeah well I, I hope to do more of that in the future um so we'll see all right so um any any last words that you have about uh about the show anything um you know i know it's been what since october since you worked on the show is there any uh last thoughts about your character and the show overall um, something new, a bit new sound bite. I, I mean, everything has just been so, you know, it's been so beauty. I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's interesting now that it's kind of coming back because we sort of left it back in October. So that's kind of been now that there's just a whole bunch of stuff that's coming up and, you know, people are talking about the show again. You're like, oh shit. Yeah. I forgot. I did that. Didn't I? <laughs> um, you know that the, we had a beautiful time in Sacramento there for our sort of premiere and for um, some of the fans that came to join and you know we saw a bunch of the guys there that was great. Um, as far as the characters concerned, um, Mickey's awesome. It should have been it should be Mickey on the front of every DVD cover and the back of every DVD, DVD cover and the inside flap of every DVD cover and on the posters of everything that sell on wheels. But unfortunately, as it is, <sighs> Colin Bohannon took that mantle. <sighs> No, so we just have to deal with what we got. But there's a lot more coming for Mickey as far as the season is concerned, and I think a lot of people are going to uh, raise some eyebrows and um, and uh, they're going to. Uh, I think. Well, I hope that they'll be pleased with sort of the the trajectory of the character and where it yeah. ends slash and or continues, which I can't say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no doubt. We're all definitely excited to see how things wind up and uh seems like it's gonna be a roller coaster starting this starting this uh this weekend. So we all look forward to it, man. And it's always a pleasure, man. I was actually listening to the last couple of shows that we were on, and it's kind of stunningly can tell you it was what, like two years ago was the last time we had <laughs> Phil on. 
Oh, yeah, wow. Been, yeah. It was a long time ago. We you gotta, know what I'm saying? We've got to do, uh, we've got to, uh, we've got to maybe do something in uh, the next few weeks and we can recap some of the Mickey antics or something like that. Yes, that definitely has to happen because it's, it's almost kind of weird to have you on and not have something stunning that Mickey has done to talk about. So we're definitely going to follow back up with you. Oh, yeah. By the way, check your email. Um, there's some info in there for you. Oh, groovy, groovy, groovy. All right. So what that said is, uh, um, oh, how can people get you in social media and such? And do you have a website or anything? No, the website, not sort of as of yet. Um, but as far as social media, um, the Twitter is at Philbrook Ninja. <laughs> and then uh, the Instagram is uh, at Philly Burks. All right. And uh, Yardley? Um, you can follow me on Twitter at militant underscore marker, and you can do the same on the grams. Right, and you can follow me at Kente F and you can go to our website, indyradio.org. That's I N D Y radio.org. Uh, this Saturday, uh, we'll be joined by, uh, um, director Tim Scoutman, uh, who directed the episode that we're going to be seeing, um, this Saturday. And also uh, next week, this uh, week from today, we'll be joined by Angela uh, Zao as well. So uh, a lot of great shows coming up. Thank you so much, Phil, for coming on the show. And uh, we'll thanks for having me. Peace. You ever done? Mm -hmm. To get your black.